Ravnica Allegiance pre-releases this weekend. It promises to be one of the best events of the year. So in this video, I'm going to tell you literally everything you need to know about this upcoming event. Help you with preparation, what to expect, deck building, strategy, and more. I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do remember, hit that like button. It helps out a lot. Seriously, it does. Just saying. The pre-release is an exciting casual event, so don't worry about it being overly competitive. While competitive players will attend, the primary focus of the pre-release is for players to enjoy the new card. This is the single best event to attend if you want to check out a local game store or you've just started getting into magic and you're ready to play some low stress games. Here's what you need to know. This pre-release is a sealed deck event, which means you're given a host of cards and you build a deck out of what you're given, no outside cards. When you sign up for the event, which you should do well ahead of time, you'll be able to choose a pre-release pack from one of five guilds represented in Ravnica Allegiance. The blue white Azorius Senate, the white black Orzov Signet, the blue green Simic Combine, the red green Gruel Clans, and the black red called Rakdos. We'll talk about each of them individually in a moment, but if you have a preference, reserve your guild as soon as you can because packs may run out. A pre release event, while casual, can last a really long time, especially if a store has a lot of attending players. These next few sentences may be some of the most important in this video, so listen up. Bring sleeves to sleeve up your deck, bring a deck box to hold the sleeve deck, bring a bottle of of water or a drink that doesn't need refrigeration, bring a snack, preferably something healthy like an apple or two, maybe a Nature Valley bar, those are great, or something similar. Eating candy bars or potato chips, not the best brain food. Bring dice for counters, bring a pen and some paper to track your life total and your opponent's life total. And finally, last but not least, shower. You have to shower before going to a pre-release. A bunch of humans in a small room will smell bad. You might think you smell fine without a shower, but you don't. Shower before you go, put on deodorant or body spray or something as well. No one smells as good as they think. It's tough love. I know. Just shower, please. With that out of the way, let's talk about the pre-release packs that you get. You'll receive a box at the beginning of the event, a box of your chosen guilt. In that box, you'll get five packs of Ravnica Allegiance, a 20-sided spin down die that is color coordinated to your chosen guild. Very nice. A code for Magic Arena that'll give you a free draft. Also cool. A foil stamped rare or mythic promo card from your guild and an entire six booster pack focused entirely on the guild you chose. When the event starts, you have all of these cards to build a 40 card minimum deck including lands, and again, you can only use cards from the box you have in front of you. It can be overwhelming, so I have some tips. As you open all of your packs, separate them into colors. While the set is a multicolored set, there are plenty of monocolored cards. By separating them by color, you'll see which colors you're strong in and which you aren't. Now, my most important tip for deck building at the pre-release, prioritize removal. Not only should you be separating your cards by color and guild if you get multicolored cards, but you should also be separating your removal from each of those piles. Removal is the most important thing in these types of events. Being able to answer giant bombs will win you games. It just will. So when you're separating your cards by seeing how much removal you have in each guild or each color, you're also being shown which colors you're strongest in. Think of every piece of removal as a bomb and it'll help you way more than you might think. Now, I know you like bombs. Everyone likes bombs. I love bombs. So when some of you open Biogenic Ooze, you're going to freak out as you should because the card's awesome. But if the rest of your green is garbage, the ooze is going to drag you down. Do not play a color if a bomb is the only reason you play that color. Instead, because this is a multicolored set, focus on the colors where you're strongest and then see if you can splash the bomb. This set is full of guild gates and lockets. You will be given opportunities to splash certain colors. If there's something worth splashing, don't be afraid to splash if you have the mana support for it. If you don't, it's a waste. Don't do it. Time to go guild by guild, then we'll talk about intra-guild synergy. We'll begin with the blue-white Azorius. This guild plays the slow game. The Azorius Senate is the epitome of control and that shows through well in this set. If you choose to go Azorius in the pre-release, you want to be the control player. You want games to go a long time and you want to choke your opponent on resources by the time it's over. Cards like Summary Judgment, Law Mages Binding, and Sky Tether make for great removal. The guild is also full of tempo ruining spells like Depose, Arrestor's Admonition, Code of Constraints, Swirling Torn, and more. While you're messing with your opponent in various ways, eventually the deck wins through over the top flyers and superior card advantage. Sphinx of New Prov, Azorius Skyguard, Senate Griffin, Wind Storm Drake, Spirit of the Spires, Chillbringer. You get my point. There are a bunch of flyers in white and blue, enough to help you get above your opponent while you halt their progress on the ground, either with the aforementioned spells or giant butts like Humungulus, Wall of Lost Thoughts, Senate Courier, Azorius Night Arbiter, and more. This guild is the control guild. The White Black Orzov Syndicate is an interesting guild this time around. Its mechanic is afterlife and makes up a large part of the Orzov strategy in the set. Pitiless Pontiff is designed around the 1-1 flyers. Final Payment is as 
as well, minister of obligation, debtor's transport. The point I'm trying to make is that the Orzov Syndicate, regardless of the other cards we're going to talk about, is a guild designed around 1-1 flyers and incremental advantage throughout the game. Thanks to being black and white, there's all of the removal we talked about in white, then clear the stage, cry of the carnarium, blade brand, hilariously, consigned to the pit, grotesque demise, and undercities embrace. Black is the color of removal, and it even comes with cards that synergize with both the 1-1 flyers and the white flyers. Look out for Spire Mangler. Solid card. In addition, if you enjoy sacrificing creatures for value, this might be the guild for you. Bankrupt in Blood, Blood Mist Infiltrator, Undercity Scavenger, Vindictive Vampire. This is a guild of incremental advantage. It's grindy and it's volatile. If you choose to play Orizov, make sure you have enough afterlife, enough removal, and enough ways to win the game. This is Aristocrats.deck. The Red Green Girl Clans might be the front runner for strongest guild in the pre-release, and you're about to find out why. The girl mechanic is Riot. A creature with Riot enters the battlefield with your choice of a plus one plus one counter or haste. This modal ability allows for incredibly versatile games and loads of power. If you want to smash faces, there's no better way to do it than with a gruel. What's interesting is while the clan is all about attacking, it also deletes blockers really well, controlling every part of combat. Clan Guild Mage, Sunder Shaman, Rubble Belt Runner, Clamor Shaman, Rumbling Ruin, Tin Street Dodger, and Enraged Ceratoc all mess with blockers, which means your aggro strategy has value beyond the mid game, which is where it usually loses most of its potency. Even beyond that, gruel comes with a crazy amount of removal. Savage Smash, Collision, Flames of the Raised Boar, Scorch Mark, Titanic Brawl, and more. This is the mid-range guild. It attacks, dodges, kills, and is elusive the entire time. If you don't know what to play by the time this video is over, play Gruul. It does a little bit of everything, it just does it all really well. The mechanic for the red black called Arakdos is Spectacle, and that should tell you all you need to know. The Rakdos are all about dealing as much damage as quickly as possible, then piling on even more damage. This guild is aggressive and ruthless, dealing damage through the early, mid, and late game, more reach than the Rakdos have ever had before. While there are cards that simply smash phase, the Rakdos has implemented a direct damage style to a lot of these cards. Rakdos Firewheeler, Rakdos Roustabout, Footlight Fiend, Carnival, and Dagger Caster. All of these cards trigger Spectacle pretty easily, which means Skewer the Critics as Lightning Bolt, Light Up the Stage is effectively card draw, Dead Revel, same thing, Juggler is cheap draw, Drillbit is duress, and Hacker Bat is cheap as heck. Now you might think the hilarity ends there, but it doesn't. Stay tuned after this recap to see the true nonsense this limited environment can create. Before we talk true power in this set, we're talking the Simic Combine. This is the ramp guild of the set. This set has the biggest payoffs, and you can see that thanks to Adapt, the Combine's guild mechanic. Every single creature with Adapt has potential for power, but that isn't what makes the Simic strong. What makes the guild strong? The synergy with those counters. Aeromunculus, Skullgator, Sauroform Hybrid, Skitter Eel, there are enough non-rare Adapt creatures to guarantee that you'll open at least a few. And thankfully, they synergize so well with the rest of the guild. Combine Guild Mage adds and manipulates counters. Galloping Lizrog is a win condition absorbing all counters, doubling them, then attacking in with Trample. Shark Doe Crab is a tempo fish octopus crab, tapping down whatever you need when you decide to adapt it or move counters onto it. Troll Bright Guardian gives all your countered creatures Trample, and Skate Wing Spy gives them all flying. Like I said, lots of synergy, but a huge mana investment, so a bit of control goes a long way. That's why you see Essence Capture in this set, Swirling Torrent Wall of Lost Thoughts, Mammoth Spider, Sylvan Brush Strider. The guild needs to survive to get the necessary payoffs from its adapt creature. If you enjoy giant creatures, a bit of control, and a ton of high value goodness, the Simic Combine might be for you now. We need to talk about the true, real power of the set, guild cooperation. What makes Ravnica Legion special is just how synergistic the guilds are with each other as long as you have fixing. Let's go all the way back to Azorius. While Addendum doesn't particularly synergize with anything, the control element of the guild synergizes very well with adapt. Think about it. You're playing the slow game. You have counter magic, tempo ruining cards. When you keep your mana up, if you don't have to use it, instead of just untapping and wasting that mana, adapt. Power up your creatures. Take on the Simic as a way to win, a way to invest your mana late game. If the fixing exists, Bant is strong. Now, while the Simic could easily incorporate the Azorius for more control, the Simic really want to pair with Gruul. Riot and Adapt are incredibly powerful together. Thanks to Riot placing plus one plus one counters, the Adapt Synergy cards are already turned on. Skate Wing Spy and Troll Bread Guardian now give Gore Clan a wrecker trample. Gruel Beastmaster trample, Rampaging Rendhorn trample. Riot and Adapt are perfect for each other, plus Simic could use the added benefit of Red's removal suite. This pair up gives the guild access to Skewer the Critic, Savage Smash, Bull Rack, Clan Crusher. What a nightmare right there. I think I've made my point. If you pick Simic at the pre release, just take a look at Teamer. Couldn't hurt to see if there's something worth putting together, trust me, it'll be fun as heck. The Gruel clans can go a couple different ways, dipping into Rakdos for more aggressive nonsense or Simic like we just spoke about. In this instance, both are actually pretty good, which means that you're going to have to play it based on what you open. Look at your fixing. If you open enough guild 
oil gates or lockets, let that steer you in the right direction. Rakdos brings fast strength and removal, allowing Gruul to further disable blockers and create big swing. If you choose to splash Simic with your Gruul, you're looking to play a slightly slower game where you build up a much larger board presence. If you're splashing blue, try to splash it for the worthwhile Riot Synergy cards like Skate Wing Spy, like Trollbred Guardian, Galloping Lizra, Combine Guild Mage, the plus one plus one counter powerhouses. I think both black and blue splashes are viable, but you have to go where the cards take you. Much like the Gruul incorporating Rakdos, the Rakdos can incorporate the Gruul for an even more aggressive and oppressive build. Both guilds are designed to deal as much damage to opponents as possible. The Rakdos use direct damage to trigger Spectacle while the Gruul disable blockers to get through. Spectacle loves this. It's just another way to trigger the guild's mechanic, keeps the deck low to the ground, but cards like Bull, Rack, Clay, and Crusher are great for getting that direct damage in. Now, if you don't like Rakdos splashing green for that pure attack strategy, you can splash white for afterlife. I might as well talk about the Orzhov and Rakdos love affair here because it is honestly one of the better guild combinations in this set. The Orzhov bring afterlife, creating lots of 1-1 tokens. The Rakdos bring Spectacle, needing direct damage to do their nonsense cheaply, but even beyond all of that, white, black, and red together, that's all of the best removal in the set. Bring to Trial, Sky Tether, Summary Judgment, Final Payment, Mortify, Get the Point, Cure the Critics, Flames of the Raised Board, Clear the Stage, Cry of the Carnarium, Consigned to the Pit, Grotesque Demise, Scorchmark, and Under City's Embrace. That's so much removal, and beyond all of this, Under City Scavenger, Goblin Gathering, Smeltward Ignis, Act Trees, and Blood Mist Infiltrator, Bankrupt in Blood, Macabre Mockery, and Fireblade Artist. In addition to the massive number of Afterlife cards, make for a Mardu Aristocrats deck that can steal creatures, sacrifice them, destroy everything that moves, sacrifice a bunch of tokens. It's a nightmare. The deck has the potential to be a true nightmare. When all is said and done, you're going to have fun no matter which guild you choose, but to quickly review everything, the Azorius are all about control, stalling the game out, and winning with superior flyers. The Orzov want to create spirits, sacrifice them, destroy their opponent's creatures, and win through incremental advantage. The Simic want to ramp into giant monstrosities, adapt, synergize with their plus one plus one counters, and overwhelm the opponent with power. The Gruul want to uh, smash. Yep. And the Rakdos want to make the opponent bleed no matter what it takes. It truly is the guild of the crazies. Now, I sincerely hope that this guide has helped you pick which guild you want to play in the pre-release. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. And as usual, I'll do my best to go through them all, answering questions where I can. Remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed this review guide and stay tuned to the channel for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you by, by TCGPlayer.com. Code Legions is a little over a week away. Now's the time to pre order a box of this set for $97 each on TCG Player. If you don't have a local game store or yours is charging way too much and you want to help the channel out a lot, click the link on the screen. Best prices around, great service, you can't go wrong. Enjoy!